What is happening guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering something that I've seen quite a few requests for recently, especially with the release of the latest versions of Gold Hen, version 2.2.3 and 2.2.4, as well as the new beta versions that have been going around recently, is how do you actually update Gold Hen if you're using one of the chips, like the ESP8266 chips, to host the exploit offline, or if you're using like the ESP32 chip or the 32S2 or S3, which can auto inject the USB image for you, or the Raspberry Pi 2W, W and 4B, uh, those devices can inject the USB image for you so you don't have to plug in a USB drive and unplug it every time you want to load Gold Hen. So those are the advantages of using those chips, but a lot of them have not been updated. So there's people still running older versions of Gold Hen on those hosts like version 2.0 b2 as old as that so if you want to update the gold hen payload on those chips so that you can get the latest version running or the latest beta build whichever version you want to run i'm going to show you guys how you can update them here in this video now i've done a full tutorial already showing you guys how to do the auto usb inject method with the raspberry pi uh, w 2w and 4b as well as the esp32 s2 chips as well so I'll leave those linked in the video description and on screen. But this video, we're just covering how to update Gold Hen on those chips to the latest version or whatever version you want to run. So let's go ahead and dive right into this here. So first of all, we're going to cover the Raspberry Pi method first because it's generally going to be the easiest one to update. So of course, I'm talking about this one here from Paul Jenkin for the Raspberry Pi. You've got the 4B, the 2W and the W. So if you have that installed on your Raspberry Pi and you're using that to load Gold Hen, I'm going to show you here how you can update it. So the first thing we're going to do is load up the internet browser and access the host. So this is the one right here uh, by Paul Jenkin that's running on the Raspberry Pi. I have a Raspberry Pi 02W, but again, this will work on those other models that I mentioned as well. So yeah, we've got Gold Hen here. If I run this, it will just run version 2.0b2, I believe is the default one that comes with this version because it was last updated in January, which was quite a long time ago. So in order to update this, we're going to get the IP address here. So there's two ways to do it. You can either take the SD card out of the Raspberry Pi, hook it up to your computer with an adapter or something, and then access it like a USB drive to swap out the payloads. However, another option is to use FTP, and then you can just connect to the Raspberry Pi via its IP address here using FTP and swap out the payloads that way. That's the way I'm going to do it because uh, it's just going to be quicker. So, so I'm going to note down the IP address that shows up right here. And then if I switch over to the computer, I'm going to use a FTP client like FileZilla. We'll open this up here and we'll go ahead and type in that IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And the username is going to be user. The password is going to be F-U-S-A-N-D. And then the port number is going to be 2121. And we can quick connect. And then you'll see that there is a gold hen folder in here. And we're just going to open up that folder. And that contains all the versions of gold hen on this host. So what we want to do then is get the latest version of gold hen or whichever one you want to add. In this case, it's going to be 2.2.4. So I'm just going to download that. I'll have the link down in the description. And we're just going to drag and drop that bin file into that folder, into the gold hen folder on our Raspberry Pi. And then that's it. It's done. All we have to do now is switch back over to the console. And then from there, if we hit the gold hen button, it will still load the older version. So we want to come out of here, go back in to the host just to refresh it. And then we're going to go to the gold hen button down here, which is actually the folder. So we go into that folder and then we have our 2.2.4 right here. We select it and then that will update it to use that version of gold hen. So now 2.2.4 has been activated. So again, we'll exit out of the browser, go back in again. And then if we load Gold Hen here, you can see it's now trying to load version 2.2.4 instead of the default version. And of course, this Raspberry Pi being the 2W model, as well as the W and 4B, do have the auto inject USB method in there. So it will just come up after a few seconds. You just wait for the notification to pop up. And once that notification pops up, you can then click OK and it will load Gold Hen version 2.2.4, as you can see there, loaded successfully. And it is indeed on version 2.2.4, as you can see in the Gold Hen menu there. So that is that. So that's how you update the Raspberry Pis. So now let's take a look at the ESP chips. Of course, the 8266 and the ESP32 
do not allow for the auto injecting of the USB image, but you might be using those just to host the exploit offline. And then of course there's the 32S2 and 32S3s which do have the ability to auto inject the USB image. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, so if we switch back over to the computer, there's kind of two main different ways of actually doing the USB auto inject uh, with the ESP32 S2 and S3s. You've got the older method, which takes a bit longer, but generally most people find it more reliable where you just wait for the notification to pop up and then it will automatically load Gold Hen. In this case, version 2.2.2 is the version that comes with this one. And then there's also the speed version. The speed version for some people tends to not be quite as reliable, but it's faster. So you load it up, you don't even get the notification. You just wait a few seconds and it will automatically load Gold Hen. And again, this version from Caro comes with version 2.2.2 of Gold Hen. So let's update both of these to version 2.2.4. So I can show you the differences because they are quite a bit different in how you update them. So we'll start off with the regular version here. Okay, so I've got my ESP32 S2 connected. It's not connected to my home network, which means it's running as its standalone access point at the moment. So I have to connect to it here on my Wi-Fi in order to be able to access the site. But then I'm going to go to 10.1.1.1, which you can see takes me to the host. So go to whatever the IP address is of the host that's running on your ESP chip. And then from there, what you want to do is change the URL by adding a forward slash admin dot HTML to the end. So the IP address of your ESP32 chip on the network and then forward slash admin dot HTML. Press enter and that will take you to this control panel. From here, you can then go to the file manager. Now, the way that this exploit is set up is all the payloads here are added in as bin files so you've got all the actual bin payloads right here and you can just replace them so we've got gold hen version 2.2.2 what we want to do is just copy the name of this so 2.2.2 we'll copy that name and then we'll take our 2.2.4 version and rename it so it's got the same name as the original version that is currently on the host so 2.2.2 so it's basically 2.2.4 that's disguised as 2.2.2 and then from there we're just going to delete this version off the host. So get rid of it. And then we'll go to the file uploader and select files. And of course, we just want to select our disguised 2.2.4 and open it and then upload the file. And then just wait a few seconds for that to upload. It's only 268 kilobytes, so it won't take long. But it is an ESP chip over Wi-Fi, so it's not got the greatest of upload speeds. But uh, yeah, there we go. So we've now got it added there. And the reason why we have to name it this way is that there's obviously going to be code that looks for this bin file to load it. So if it was still called 2.2.4, then it would be loading the wrong thing and nothing would happen. So we have to have it named as 2.2.2 or whatever the normal version of Gold Hen was that was on the host. And we have essentially replaced it with 2.2.4. So now if we go back to the PS4 and try and load it here, you can see if we speed this up, that we get the notification and then I select 2.2.2 but because I've replaced it you can see it's actually loading version 2.2.4 and that's how you update it without having to wait for Caro to release a new bin file that has 2.2.4 already included instead of having to wait you can just replace the file there and use the current host without having to reflash the ESP chip at all and you are up and running so so that's how that one works now there are some other hosts that will actually not have the bin files stored in here. Instead, they will compress them into a gzip file, which is like a compressed zip archive, uh, which makes obviously the file size smaller so they can fit more payloads on the host because these little ESP chips only have a very limited amount of memory, like four megabytes or eight megabytes, depending on the chip. Some have 16, but uh, yeah, so obviously you can't fit that many payloads on there. So they compress them into gzip files. So instead of having a .bin file in here, you have something that's like a .bin.gz or something like that. Then that means that you'll have to take your gold hen payload after you've renamed it and use 7-zip to add it to an archive and make sure you add it to a gzip archive. And then you can basically create that, which will create your gzip file there, bin.gz, and then you can replace it on the host. So that is the way to do that. If the host that you're using does have the payloads compressed into a archive. 
All right, so that's essentially how you do that one. So let's take a look at the speed method here. Okay, so the speed method works quite a bit differently. So with the older version, as you could see there, it, it gives you the actual notification that shows up. And then after a few seconds, it will load the payload. Whereas with the speed method, it loads the payload pretty much instantly. You don't even get the notification popping up. And part of the reason for that seems to be the way that the payload is added and the way that it's executed. And that, that means it's stored quite a bit differently in the actual host compared to the other version that we just did. So I've gone ahead and flashed this version to the chip and I've reconnected up to the Cairo network again. And if I just refresh here, because it's the same IP address and everything, and the same kind of admin panel shows up. But if we go into the file manager in this version, you can notice that there is no payloads in here. Now this version is just designed to load gold hen. It doesn't have any additional payloads. However, it's just an index.html file that's in here. There's no payload to actually load. And that is because the payload itself is essentially broken down into a sequence of bytes or a sequence of unsigned integers that are just added as an array in the actual index file here, and then they're executed that way. So that is quite a bit different. So in order to update this, which it's not really designed to allow you to update it, but I've kind of I've kind of made something that should make it fairly straightforward. So all you need to do is go to the actual main page. So if we go back to the main page here, because if you try and select download on this file, it will not download it. It'll just take you to the page here. So what you want to do is just go to the IP address of the ESP chip, which will take you to the index file and actually trying to load the exploit. And then all we're going to do is right click and save as. If you're in Google Chrome, you'll have this option. It'll be called something else in other browsers, but you can basically save the file this way. So you just right click, save as, and then just save it to the desktop. And then we have the index file here. We can just rename this to index.html, which is the proper name for it. And then what we're going to do is right click on this and edit it in Notepad. Of course, you can use regular Notepad here and just drag it in to Notepad and you'll get access to everything here. I'm going to use Notepad++ or if you have any other kind of more advanced text editor you can use. So we'll open this up in Notepad or Notepad++. And if I scroll down, you'll find eventually we'll get to Gold Hen itself. So you can see here payload equals and then you have this huge array of bytes or unsigned integers here that go all the way along to the other side of the page. So that is the gold hen payload itself and all we're going to do is replace that. So in order to generate this from the actual bin file of gold hen itself, which again I'll rename this back to 2.2.4. So in order to actually generate that I have created a program called bin to uint.exe. All you have to do is take the bin file for whatever version of gold hen you want to use and drag it on top of this program and let go and then just wait a few seconds for it to finish. I might put a progress bar or a percentage or something in there with the final version but uh, yeah you just wait a few seconds for it to process everything and then it should output a text file and if we open up that text file you can see we have a huge array of unsigned integers here. So this is the format that we need. So this is the whole payload converted into this huge array. So all you're gonna do is do control A to highlight everything in this text file and then control C to copy it or right click and copy it to copy the entire thing. And then from there, if we just go back to the original one, so this is of course, gold hen 2.2.2. And if we scroll over to the end, so there we go. You can see I got to the end of the file there. For some reason, there's an extra zero at the very end of the array. So I guess we'll have to put that in as well. But we're going to highlight everything here and just delete that entire thing. So now the payload is empty. And then we're just going to paste in our 2.2.4 array right there. And if I scroll over to the end, I'll add that extra zero that is at the end for whatever reason. And we'll pop that in. And there we go. We have the entire payload converted so we can save that file now and then upload that back to the host which of course we'll do using the admin panel so we'll do forward slash admin.html we'll go back to the file manager we'll delete this index.html get rid of that and then we'll go to file uploader select files and of course we're going to select the index.html we just modified and upload files and there we go that has successfully been updated so if we switch back over to the ps4 again 
So if you load up the internet browser to go back on the host, before you go on it, some hosts obviously cache the payloads in your browser. So you might want to clear your cache in case you're using one of the exploit hosts that does have an offline cache. So if we hit the options button, go to settings and delete cookies and clear website data, just to make sure you should do that after updating the payloads on any host is that you should clear your website data. But anyway, if we go back on here, it should start loading. So there we go. Jailbreaking, please wait. And of course, we get some out of memory errors. That's quite common. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it says 2.2.2, but in the top left, it is 2.2.4 that has indeed been loaded. As you can see right here, we have successfully loaded that payload. So that is it. That's how you update Gold Hen to whatever version you want on whatever chip you're using, the ESP chips, the Raspberry Pi chips, whatever you're using, whether you're using the ones that just allow you to host the exploit offline or you're using the ones that allow you to auto inject the USB image. From now on, you can update them to whatever Gold Hen version you want to use and use it with that chip. So yeah, hope you guys find this information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.